Welcome to the latest installment of a series that we like to call That Leslie Sound. In this series, we're going to attempt to cover every Leslie pedal on the used in the new market. If you want to know more about what pedals are in the series, click on the card above to watch the series opener. And if you want to know what that Leslie sound is, click on the card that will take you to a YouTube playlist that you'll hear many famous songs that use that Leslie sound. Welcome to the series. <laughs> Today, that Leslie sound is being brought to you by the Hughes and Kettner tube rotosphere, and the beard is going to let you know what it sounds like. All right, so that was the Hughes and Kettner tube rotosphere brought to you in glorious stereo sound. Obviously sounds better with some headphones on. Right. Uh, so if you weren't doing that, maybe check that out. So I, I've been, this is the one that I've been wanting to do probably since the beginning. In fact, when we started the channel a little over a year ago, this was on my radar, radar as an episode I wanted to do. Uh, and somehow turned into... Let, turn into, let's do 24 other pedals before we do this right, one. <laughs> let's right. Let's save the potential best for last. That you're... Right. And and so when we say best, I, I mean, I love the sound of this. Sounds great. There's some problems. Right off the bat, looking at you can tell it's a tank. It's huge. I was going to say, is it rhyme with footprint? <laughs> yes. It, it's huge. Uh, but if you have a place where you can leave it set up and leave it there, yeah. like I do, yeah, it's a great pedal it's to have. Cool. Yeah. Um, have on your on your board or your auxiliary board that you need to hold it so the other problem is they tend to get a lot of there there's a noise a little hiss i don't know there's an actual you can see there's an actual tube glowing in there right and so i don't normally hear that hiss i think that is really coming from running into the front of the amp so normally when I run this, I run it through an effects loop. Okay. Um, and I don't think the hiss is as much of a problem. Right. But sometimes you can hear it. It, sound, it actually sometimes sounds like you have an actual Leslie running. Like you get that, that swirl kind of hiss underneath if you have it just sitting on. Anyway, uh, breaking it down is not going to be hard. The features, you have a bypass switch to turn it on or off. You have a breaker switch, which is your break. So if you push that... It's, Stops the virtual rotors from spinning. Uh, they slow down to come to a stop. You have a fast slow to go between fast and slow. Knobs across the top. You have a drive knob. And then you have an output knob. And then a rotor balance. Low frequency to the left. High frequency to the right. Stereo out. Ins and outs on the back. And then you also have a remote switch. And American Loopers made me a remote. I reached out to them. They made me a remote. It's just a little two-button foot switch mm -hmm. with a light above each button. One button does the on-off. One button does the fast and slow. Right. Um, so you can plug into the remote switch, have that sit literally sitting off to the side somewhere, and have your little switch right you Put your amp there. on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Use it to keep raise your amp off the ground. <laughs> yeah, it's a beast. Um, so I think we start with... The Leslie Riff we play for every single one. Yeah. We'll start with it on fast, kick it to slow. We'll let you play through like a time or two, kick it slow. We'll let you do the dry signal. You're playing a... Yep. Uh, I almost said a Fender Supro. Supro Hampton, Hampton through a Fender 
Hot Rod Deluxe. A little bit of reverb. I always like to do that. That last little turn. <laughs> and I can't remember. I kind of think this is version... There's two versions out. There's mm-hmm. a, an older and a newer one. They're both not made anymore. Typically, the newer version, and somebody might call me on this, but typically, the newer version, I believe, has this kind of brushed aluminum look, right? The other one's just plain aluminum, and this has the squirrels on it. But I do believe this is a version one, even though it has what you would typically find okay. on the later one, because... And it has been about a year and a half, two years since I thought about this. So I could be could be wrong. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But I think version one, the brake, you have to press and hold. Okay. And then when you let go, it goes back up. I think in version two, you press the brake, it slows down. You press it again, it speeds back up. Right. Okay. I believe. So You're saying we have to buy another one? Yeah, see? well, maybe we'll just have to get another one in. <laughs> so I believe... Because initially I wanted the version two, but then I, this one popped up, and I, you know, I'm kind of glad. I don't, I don't really use the brake anyway, so because I like to switch back and forth and mm-hmm. let it speed up, slow down all the time. Typically, right here, what we would do is show you the fat, the extremes on the fast or the slow knobs. Right. They're locked, so you're not changing that at all. It is what it is. Um, then we go through some of the other settings. This thing is pretty stripped down. I mean, it's pretty much that's it. Uh, we can do real quick, maybe rotate through, go all the way to the low frequency in the middle and all the way to the high, just mm-hmm. to show people the difference in that. And there's no there's no changing the ramp speed either, right? It's just no it, changes the ramp speed. And, yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. I'll put there a little alternative thing here. So as another pedals, it goes from wet blanket to AM radio. <laughs> this is not one of those where every sound is probably right, a right, usable yeah. sound. Right. There definitely is a sweet spot in there. And, and like most of the Leslie's that we've looked at, Leslie pedals, some of the others, whatever, that we looked at, leaning a little bit towards the highs on this, for me anyway, seems to be where yeah. where to go. Yeah, well, let me play, that's where you think the sweet spot is? Yeah, so I'll just play that real quick. Let me get turn the pedal back on. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, I agree. Like you said, lean a little bit towards the highs because that that low rotor sound gets kind of muffly pretty quick. Why don't you play that same thing on slow? All right.
I always smile for two reasons. Well, I guess three. One, you're happy. But, right. but when we're doing this, because when we first started this series, back when his beard looked like mine, uh, <laughs> I really wasn't digging the slow sound in a Leslie. I really like the exaggerated fast sound. But I've grown to love the slower sound more. And every time I play something, I just feel like David Gilmore kind of peeks his head around the corner and goes, hey, that's, a, that's the right speed, you know? Right. So that, that sounds great. I hear it on Sundays when we play together from across the stage, and it sounds great. I'm curious to hear it close mic, you know, what it sounds like. That's a great pedal. In the mix. Yeah. Like some pedals, mm. you can sit in a room with them and be like, oh, that sounds amazing. Right. And you put them next to you and that's so much. Yeah. This is one that when you're playing with this group situation, yep. in that fast and slow, the ramp is just like the perfect speed mm-hmm. that you can kind of be like, okay, I'm going to land on, you know, the first chord of a phrase. Mm-hmm. And you learn when I need to hit that. Right. So when I hit that, you know, so it will get that ramp down to the slow speed for that first quarter, for vice versa. Really, really nice. Um, do we want to just run through the drive on it once? Sure. I'm a little afraid. We'll put, we'll keep it on the slow. I'm a little afraid because I don't know that. I mean, literally, I got the knobs. Where take a picture of it, right? <laughs> I haven't changed them, so I'm a little afraid, A, I want to move them, but B, um, I have no idea what that drive's going to do when we start getting past where it is. Well, we're going to find out. Right. So we'll start it. It's not the first time we've chased ourselves out of a room. We'll start it all the way at off. So all the way at off. It it added volume, but felt like it added more like top end, but but not totally an uncomfortable amount. I, I backed this back to two, so it was a little brighter by nature. I, I didn't sit, think that. I did notice a couple times that tube saturation light. Okay. When you hit it a little hard when it was up high, mm-hmm. it, it blinked on, and so I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. Um, <laughs> Working that too. Yeah, we didn't we didn't look that up. It's funny. It's like, oh, here's a pedal I know really well, and then you put it down. <laughs> here's a pedal I know nothing about. Right. I, I know just how it sounds <laughs> sounds really good when you turn it on. I know where to set it to where I like it. Right, right. So, and I, I yeah, think, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's pretty much this mm-hmm. pedal. We should turn that off. I could just do it quick. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but in the live amp world that we live in, that just adds ambiance. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's Once like, you start playing, you'll hear it. ambient tone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it makes the guitar start to sing back there. So it is, yeah, I mean, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, it, it is, it, it's a labor of love. Like, if you really love the Leslie sound, and you really love the sound of this pedal, right. and you're willing to deal with the fact that there might be some hiss, depending on where you put it, the recommendations really affect Luke, probably. Right. Um... If you're willing to carry around something that big, if you're willing, you know, all that. But bottom line, at the end of the night, you're not going to be disappointed you did because it's no. going to sound really good. If you go through those efforts, the reward is great. I, right. from, from a guy who has, first time I actually think I really played it, but I've been the benefactor of hearing it many times in a live setting. Yeah, the, I mean, if you're willing to do it, it pays off. Mm-hmm. But... There's a whole lot of other great options that are new on the market that you can buy new, that you can, right? So, and we've been through, I don't know, about 23 of other options out there, so. You can only put up so many cards in an episode, but if not, it'd be like. <laughs> but if you put, I mean, if you watch on Reverb, they come up, yeah. they can be really ridiculously expensive, and they can be really reasonable, too. Right. So, uh, but it is what it is. So with that, I think, you know, new new uh, content from us every Wednesday and Saturday, typically around noon. Uh, 
We have other things going on in the interview series, other pedal reviews, field trips, things like that. Obviously, the Leslie series, which is wrapping up and going to morph into a new... It's going to modulate into a new series eventually. Um, because we're here. So I think there's one other pedal to record and a few loose ends to tie up. Um, so please subscribe to catch the rest of that. Subscribe, click the like button, hit notifications, stop by Instagram and Facebook. We post a lot of what's coming up, things that are coming in there, sometimes little live streams of unboxings and stuff like that, so you know what's happening. And with that... I'm PJ on behalf of The Beard, reminding you no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. I wonder what this one sounds like with drive on it. <laughs> For the record, I didn't join a band, but when you went fast, it reminded me of Cold Shot, so I did a cold with a gun symbol. <laughs> West side, east side.